Yes, Mr. Burr. All right. Um, so again, good evening, everybody, to all the audience, to the RSSDI committee who has invited me. Thank you. It's a pleasure and privilege to be part of this uh, symposium with such eminent speakers as well. And today what we're talking about is technology and digital solutions. As we've all been witnessing over the last couple of decades, innovation and technology has made marked forays into all aspects of human existence. Technology is a very powerful tool. It has revolutionized all of our lives at, and healthcare being no exception to this. Within this arena of medicine, diabetes is one such unforgiving, hard to manage disease. We all have experience in all of this. And therefore the use of technology probably as an assistant, when if we can integrate this, can embrace it, can possibly help a lot of positive transformation for patients and doctors alike in taking better care for our patients with diabetes. So let's see how this can be done. So number one, to identify the hurdles of diabetes management. Like I said earlier, this diabetes basically is a chronic disease, which indicates it's a permanent disease. People with diabetes require constant, daily, relentless self-motivation to keep this under control. The moment people with diabetes think it's under control, the progressive character of this disease takes over and things go out of control again, therefore leading to a lot of myths, lots of stigmata, and as a result of that, resulting in a lot of diabetes fatigue. Patients and doctors almost go into inertia where it comes to taking care of this condition. Notwithstanding that, there is a lot of heterogeneity in its presentation as well. Patients can have multiple different types of presentations right from the onset of insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, right up to the point of the advanced complications of diabetes, multiple types of presentations, like I said. The care providers for the diabetes, again, are multiple. Right from us specialists, the endocrinologists, diabetologists, you have every friend and relative sending WhatsApp messages in terms of how to take care of it. And then recently in the last few years, we are seeing the springing up of so many lifestyle coaches who are teaching patients about management of diabetes, so many certified nutritions. My patients are always joking with me that they have to pay more to their nutritionists than to the endocrinologists for that matter. And undoubtedly, in terms of payer systems, diabetes is an expensive disease to manage because in India especially, we are managing this out of pocket. So in terms of the current scenario, people who are in the know, people who want to control their diabetes are definitely looking for better care. But there are so many barriers to that. Number one, of course, is access to better care. People might come from small towns into our big cities only to find that the patient to ratio, uh, the patient to provider ratio is indeed very prohibitive. The patients therefore remain dissatisfied with their care. The doctors who want to provide care have their own barriers, are therefore not able to provide the right amount of care. Economics, of course, keep escalating in this whole story. And at the end of the day, outcomes still remain poor, whether it is glycemic outcomes, whether it is outcomes related to the morbidities, the mortality associated with diabetes. We see no such improvement. Overall, the hurdles seem always intense. So therefore, with this whole fragmented healthcare system, with this whole system that we have where patients are meeting us only episodically when, you know, nonsense is hitting the fan. And that in our country, we see that patients are coming, especially when things are really going awry. On top of that, we have the suboptimal doctor to patient ratio, a need for multidisciplinary care. And therefore, what we need is some help some help, some assistance to fill these gaps. And that is where possibly the potential of digital health does come in. In terms of providing more continuity to fill these gaps, a little more coordination, a little more quality of care, and definitely more connectivity between patients and their doctors to better manage this disease overall. So if we put together the human head, the doctors, we as the doctors, as the head coach in this whole story, and use technology, this powerful tool as our assistance. Together, possibly, we can provide more personalized, longitudinal, multidisciplinary, and outcome-driven care throughout the disease continuum for all of our patients. Now, digital health, like we all know, is not new to our scenario. Today, all people across different countries, across different societies, are interested in knowing they want data about how we are eating, how we are exercising, how we are sleeping, how we are defecating. So everybody just wants more and more data. For, for example, my husband who's sleeping seven hours a day will often just come back to me in the morning. After ha having slept those seven hours, he'll tell me, 
Pia, my, my tracker is showing that I slept only one hour of deep sleep. I mean, the information is just too much for that matter. And then again, this has progressed then into measurement products. For example, we have the CGM, the SMBG, which is all now cloud connected, like Dr. Sahai just spoke about. I was recently impressed by a friend of mine, a non-medical who detected an atrial fibrillation on a smartwatch. So overall, digital health is moving into better evidence-based products. And from there on, we now have evidence-based therapeutic in interventions, therapeutic softwares that that can basically offer treatment also as an intervention, call it a digital pill, if you will, and we will discuss that in a little more detail in a little time. So if we all look at the landscape around us, we are surrounded by these e-health measures. You look at Farm Easy, et cetera, which are you know, dispensing medications at a much cheaper rate than our traditional chemis uh, chemists. You have the devices, the sensors, the Fitbits, the Apple Watches. You have so many different consumer health and, uh, and wellness sites, Native Health, CureFit, I mean, the, the, the list goes on. Telehealth, Practo, Healthify that have improved the patient and, and physician connection via different digital means as well. And finally, coming to the area, the advanced area of digital therapeutics that has prescribable personali personalized longitudinal care with outcomes such as Fitterfly and Wealthy. Now, let's understand that all of these digital health uh, you know, means have a lot of overlap between them as well, because there's a, a lack of standard lexicon. In terms of what is available, let's see what is available from the point of view of addressing the challenges of diabetes care in, uh, in specifically. So let's start with basically data management platforms. Today, like we heard a little earlier from Dr. Sahai again, for us as, as doctors managing diabetes, the most valuable data for us is the blood glucose levels. How high, how low, why high, why low, when high, when low, this is data that we need all the time to improve our diabetes management. And therefore, these data management platforms, basically electronic systems that help to consolidate data from blood glucose meters, from CGM devices, insulin pumps, fitness trackers, into a single standardized report, putting them onto a single unified platform where all of this information can be basically combined and displayed and, and therefore engaging the patient in his own care, helping doctors analyze it easier would be something that would be extremely useful, helping to reduce patient burden, provider burden, and in turn, therefore improving clinical outcomes as well. In terms of telehealth services, well, this, in my opinion, has become the game changer, especially during pandemic times. Nowadays, so many of my patients, I find it's not only patients who are out of the country or in another city. It's basically even, two, even patients who are two buildings away from my clinic who want to use telehealth services because it saves them so much time, so much trouble, so much transportation cost, et cetera. All of that is really has, has changed all of this. And in fact, the MO, MOHFW sent out guidelines last year to help us monetize telehealth services as well. How has this helped? It lowers costs, it improves the patient to provider ratios, expands geographical access to across the world, reduces provider burden, and improves clinical outcomes as well. Well, digital prevention programs are, again, something that we see all around us. The landmark diabetes prevention program was the first that focused on lifestyle coaching and education. And this now has been taken forward digitally, either in an individualized or a group setting. The goal finally being that these in-person meetings are now made into digital meetings, making them more successful, more scalable, and more cost effective as well. Some examples of these kind of programs, Fitterfly, Omada, Canary, etc., all across. Showing you some of the programs that have improved clinical outcomes. For example, for example, Omada's health basically presented data. There was a reduction of 4.9% of initial body weight after one year and an A1C reduction of 0.4 and 0.46 after one to two years, respectively. Economic burden as well. So these are, of course, all dollar costs that I'm showing you, but like you're seeing, the dollar cost came out by using the, by using the digital community, uh, you know, community-based community interventions, the cost has come down to almost a third. Mobile applications, well, that is something that we're seeing a plethora of. Nutrition apps, basically evaluating macronutrient and micronutrient data, helping patients with their meal planning, insulin dose adjustments as well. Physical activity apps, again, those we are seeing, you know, are abounding again, help patients track their activities, set their goals for physical exercise and weight management. 
glucose monitoring apps like we've just heard already, the Diabetes in Check, AccuCheck 360 helps to graphically display glucose levels to assist patients and doctors as well for management of glucose. Insulin titration apps puts patient in charge of calculating their own insulin doses, which really gives a sense of, you know, control to the patients with regards to their insulin management. And this is, for example, like the My Coach app from Sanofi. Insulin delivery apps, again, for insulin pumps and smart pens, it basically helps for calculation of insulin doses again, for example, the AccuCheck Solo Diabetes Manager. And finally, the AIDS systems, which are the closed loop control systems, the artificial pancreas, where there is communication between the CGM and the insulin pump, such as the Minimed. And a lot of these apps have shown that there have been improved clinical outcomes, reducing provider burden and reducing the economic burden as a whole as well. Let's go on to social media. Well, the, the, the less said, the better, I would say. There are so, so many platforms today that are enabling peer-to-peer -peer communication through patient blogs, podcasts, through these diabetes forums, through general social, social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And again, so many information sharing websites that post diabetes news and advice. And all of us have been a part of this at some point of time. In terms of cloud-connected glucose monitoring systems, again, these have become important, again, because with manual logbooks, like we just saw in the previous lecture, again, manual logbooks, though they yet remain the mainstay of data provision by our patients to us, are difficult, are time-consuming, are so hard to analyze. Patients half the time don't carry it. If they carry it, the data is recorded very poorly, making it very difficult to sift through. Data is omitted, sometimes even fabricated, and a lot of our patients, of course, have literacy problems. Well, so at the end of the day, what we really need is more integrated, personalized diabetes management. Like I said earlier, if we have the doctor, we as the doctors at the helm, alongside with that, we have technology as our assistant to help to collect, integrate, analyze the relevant data, which helps us, you know, make decisions easier, improve time in range for our patients, and therefore delay disease progression. Well, this could really be an integrated solution to overall improve diabetes management. One such, like we heard earlier from Dr. Modi also earlier, Fitofly is one particular group that I started using, especially during the time of pandemic where my whole back office was, you know, not functional. Over here, I, I found that with their particular processes, the data that I sent over as the doctor was collected, the patient's diet, exercise, sleep, stress patterns evaluated, the use of then monitoring systems to evaluate the blood glucose data, issues identified, and finally, with regards to corrective actions, while the medications, et cetera, were, were under my guidance, a lot of the back office help that I needed in terms of diet, exercise supervision with physiotherapists, stress counseling, et cetera, was all taken over by this digital, digital therapeutics program that was started in 2016. The outcomes were what was also great, where it showed 95% of patients had a de decrease in A1C levels, 1.22% being the average drop, a good amount of weight loss in 85% of medications and a 30% reduction in insulin as well as well is what the results were shown. One very important aspect that I liked about it was the evaluation and addressing of mental well-being, an important component that we often don't have the time to, overlook, uh, to look into. And it was found that with these 300 patients from this program, 66% of our patients have emotional distress as well. 35% have sleep issues. So basically by taking the time to evaluate all of these issues, the appropriate interventions customized towards patient could be done and also addressed at the same time to improve outcomes. There has been clinical validation as well. A number of papers, guest lectures, et cetera, have been done by this particular group. So overall, coming back to just digital therapeutics, how is it going to help us as doctors? Number one, as control improves with lifestyle and medication adherence, as our own practices improve when we have support beyond the clinic, well, all of this is going to lead to patient compliance. Improved patient compliance leads to more patient satisfaction and therefore patient retention. And at the same time, we have greater insight into patient's lifestyle through actionable blood glucose data reports also as well. Finally, what, where in diabetes are digital solutions going to have a place? Well, possibly in terms of pre-diabetes obesity, new onset diabetes, where diabetes reversal is a possibility. I myself had a patient, young woman with diabetes, 
who with the with the use of the program I just spoke about had a complete reversal, is enjoying an A1C of 5.4% without the use of any medications. Today, I gradually took her off everything. And then other indications like metabolic syndrome, patients with erratic glucose control, OHA failure, insulin initiation are the multitude of areas where this is usable. Well, let's all understand that digital therapeutics is here to stay and is the future. When we have a combination of the human hand and technology in combination with each other, we are going to see improvement in all kinds of outcomes. I'm going to end basically with Steve Jobs, who's always so inspirational, saying that the biggest innovation in the 21st century is going to be the intersection of biology and technology. Thank you very much.